Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose, and today we're going to be talking about Liberty and Slavery, written by George Moses Horton. Now, before I go into the summary analysis of this work, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment so that the channel can continue to grow. Um, in this poem, basically, uh, we get an account of slavery um, and just the, the want um, of being free, of wanting to be free, of wanting uh, to, to have liberty. George Moses Horton, uh, he was born a slave. He was a slave for 66 years, um, and life wasn't easy for him. Uh, he lived during a time where, you know, you weren't in charge of yourself. You had to live uh, by the law of your master. And in this poem, he really works to kind of like, um, well, from my perspective, at least, I think he, he really talks to liberty, um, which is very fascinating because he talks to, to, to slavery. There's several parts throughout the poem where he's saying, oh, slavery, this and that, um, about freedom, about how great it would be to be free and to taste freedom. Uh, he talks about is is the, is the only escape for me or for African Americans during, um, or I guess just black people during the time of slavery, is there any way other than death out of slavery? Because if you were a slave during the age of slavery in America, the only way that you could escape it or not be a slave anymore was to die. Um, so he says within the poem, is that the only way that I can escape uh, this this plight that I'm in, um, and he's very much in captivity. He's very much in chains. Uh, he he talks about freedom. He really brings in a lot of imagery for freedom and for what liberty really means. Um, he talks about being free. He talks about flying. He talks about the the, the rising sun. Uh, he talk. He, he even says. Um, he he kind of points to history by saying that. Liberty is often gained by by blood, by war, and, and that's usually the case. Whenever you have a people being dominated by another group of people, uh, the only way that the, the enslaved population can gain its freedom um, is by war, uh, by conflict. And this was, you know, extremely true within the within America because the Civil War happened, the Emancipation Proclamation um, took place. Um, and so it, it did take a war, uh, a civil war, for slavery to be abolished in America. Now, the, the Civil War was for, there, there's other um, reasons why the Civil War occurred, uh, but the Emancipation Proclamation uh, was one of those reasons. Um, so, you know, this poem, it's, it's not quite, it's not a happy poem. Um, this man did live um, over half a century, um, uh, um, you know, he was a, a slave for over half a century, and that's unbearable um, to live for half a century knowing that um, nothing you do or everything that you are is, you know, dictated by another person, that you do not have an independence, that you do not have an identity, you are what they say you are, and there's no... There's no if, ands, or buts. You just have to follow what your master says. Um, so th this poem, it's 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 different from other types of poems in regards to slavery because I feel like, um, from my perspective, that uh, George Moses Horton here is talking to slavery. Um, well, not slavery. I think he's talking to liberty. Um, the way he talks to liberty and he describes liberty and about being free. I mean, he compares liberty to free animals. Um, you know, preachers that fly um, and, and just just being free and having no one to answer to and existing based on what you want to do and your will. Um, because as a slave, you, you do not, you know, you do not control when you get up. You do not control when you sleep. You do not control uh, when you wake up. You do not control, you know, you do not control anything about your existence. Your existence is entirely dictated by somebody else um, and so he compares himself to the free things of the world or things that he sees that are free and he wishes to be free like them um, and he's like in a way asking how long how long is it going to take for me to be free um, is there no other answers and in, in, in a way I think 
uh, this poem is at the same time kind of like coming face to face with the plight, with the reality that he's facing, because he's, he knows that, you know, for the majority of, uh, of his life, he knew that the only way out of slavery was probably to die. Because uh, if you try to escape, if you try to abandon your, your post or your master, they would hunt you down um, and kill you or drag, drag you back to the plantation or to the master's house and you would be beaten or punished. Um, so, you know, it's a poem that's that's talking about blood, that's talking about death, that's, you know, even talking about what am I going to do? Where am I going to go? What's my future? Am I just supposed to die and just bear this until I die? Um, or um, is there a way out? So he's crying out to liberty. He's calling out to liberty. And, and it kind of like, it seems as if liberty for me, it seems as if like liberty is this this entity, this being that could come in and save him uh, because she can stop the oppression. Uh, she can, um, you know, free him. She can make him an, a, an individual man. So this poem is, is really talking about or urging for, uh, um, you know, freedom for black people, uh, the, the abolishment of slavery, um, and just, just it illustrates and depicts the the horrors and the injustice and um, the grief and the sorrow that 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 exists in slavery. Um, so in in America, slavery was abolished. Slavery is is not allowed. Um, it no longer exists. But uh, around the world, um, when you think about slavery and you think about people who are underneath the control of a master, you know it still exists. I think today in the twenty first century. Um, when you think about uh, um, sex trafficking and you think about child trafficking, you think about, um, you know, organ farms and, and the organ trade, the people, um, you know, kidnapping people and then chopping them up for organs and, and things like that. And the third, there's still horrific things that, that are still happening on the planet and slavery still exists and might even be um, stronger today. In the past, it was recognized by governments and countries, and now it's not. Um, now it's not, but that doesn't mean slavery doesn't still happen around the world. It still does. It just depends on, on you know, where you look for it. Um, yeah, yeah, it's it's really sad, uh, but it's, it's a reality. Um, so in terms of analysis, in terms of deeper meaning here, uh, this poem, it, it really reflects on the reality that African Americans had to face. Um, I think it makes it makes us think about this African American man and, and just black people in general within uh, the slavery era in the United States, wh where they kind of had to think about or the only options that they had when when they had it too much or they had enough of of being slaves was either death um, or this hope of liberty and 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 you know that hope for most. Um, it just never came to pass. Um, you know, slavery is a very cruel and, and, and just, it's a hard thing to think about because when you think about slavery, for me, the thing that really puts a period at the end of slavery is uh, a lot of black mothers or mothers who uh, were slaves, a lot of them decided to kill their children, smother their babies, kill their babies rather than let them um, be slaves. And a lot of, you know, mothers, black mothers had to face that decision. Do I let this child live to be a slave or do I kill it? Because, I mean, during the time of slavery, a, a black woman wasn't just a slave. She was um, a means to an end because she, she could make more slaves. So... Just like a, a cow is is used to make to produce milk and to make more cows, um, you know the black woman, the female slave wasn't just working; she wasn't just you know being enslaved. She was also the the function of creating more slaves, and you know that saved the master a lot of money because. Why buy more slaves when you can force your female slaves to make more for you? Um, so yeah, yeah, the slavery is just, it's, um, it's a dark matter. 
But that's the poem. That's what it's talking about. That's, that's what's going on in it. Um, George Moses Horton here. He talks about the darkness, the, the cruelty, the horrors of slavery. Uh, and then he kind of asks how long. And also he talks to slavery. He begs slavery to free him and his people. Um, you know, to and he wishes and, and paints a picture and depicts... Uh, you know, freedom and, and what it is to meet to be free and, and what he's imagining freedom is uh, and, and, you know, being in a world where you're not um, being told what to do 24 uh, seven. But yeah, that's all I had to say about this poem. Um, you know, very interesting poem. Please remember to leave a like, a subscribe and or comment and I'll see you guys in the next video.